The Duelist Genesis was released on September 2nd, 2008. This set introduced Synchro Monsters, a new type of monster that reside in the extra deck that is summoned to the field using a tuner monster, a new subtype of monster, and non-tuner monster by adding their levels together to equal that of the desired Synchro Monster. Additionally, a new ban list was released just before the release of the Duelist Genesis on September 1st, 2008. Dark Magician of Chaos, Destiny Hero Disc Commander, and Premature Burial were now banned from official tournament play. Breaker the Magical Warrior, Cyber Dragon, Dandelion, Gores, the Emissary of Darkness, Monster Gate, and Reasoning were all now limited to one copy each. Dark Arm Dragon, Judgment Dragon, Phantom of Chaos, Rescue Cat, Card of Safe Return, Chain Strike, and Nobleman of Crossout were all now semi-limited to two copies per deck. And finally, Destiny Hero Malicious, Light and Darkness Dragon, Allure of Darkness, Mage Power, Reinforcement of the Army, and Royal Decree were all now unlimited to three copies. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in, because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!. Well, folks, we scummed another win, and after watching that footage back, I have no idea how it happened. Uh, Curse Card Virus is a terrible card, it turns out. Who knew? Well, folks, we are now one game away from tying up the series, and I would like to get it done this week. The reason for that is after this week, Yu-Gi-Oh! ends. Now, let me set the stage for you. In September of 2008, the Duelist Genesis was released. Now, this set contained not only a significant amount of format staples that would shape the meta in the coming months, it also contained Synchros. These cards, which get advantage off of high-level monsters plus tuners, propelled one deck to the forefront of public consciousness for the next eight months. Teledad. Now, in September, a ban list was released. This ban list set Dad to 2, Allure back to 3, and had pretty much no hits to Gladiator Beast at all. Going into SJC Baltimore, which took place just a couple of days after the release and the ban list, people expected either Gladiator Beast or Dark Arm Dragon to come out on top. And the results may shock you, Glad did a lot better. Not a ton, not by a country mile, but enough better that people weren't expecting as much Dark Arm Dragon as they saw for the next half of a year. Now, a couple of things are important about SJC Baltimore specifically. Charge of the Light Brigade is in Duelist Genesis, so Light Sworn gets a big benefit, but people hadn't pulled it early on. As a result, there is what Metagame.com calls a shortage of Charge of the Light Brigade, and therefore a shortage of Light Sworn decks. What's more, people were more comfortable playing Gladiator Beast, and every Canadian brought a build of Dark Arm Dragon, which took a ton of spots in the top 16. After the top 16, however, there were only eight decks that remained, five Gladiator Beasts, and three Dark Arm Dragon builds, and Gladiator Beast ended up taking the deck. This was the last time a non-Teledad deck would win an event in a long time. We're playing the win today. I would be happy with either Teledad or Gladiator Beast. Gladiator Beast because they did get a couple of new pieces of support. War Chariot among them. A Kest is in this deck now. Dark Arm Dragon because it's one of the strongest decks ever made. But I will, of course be willing to shoulder dad for the time being. Uh, it's not like we have to roll it or we lose. You're going to see a lot of this deck in the future. So let's get our spin on. We've got a bunch of them. I'm shooting for Gladiator Beast. I need to win this. Oh, man. Can I pass up the opportunity to play Dark Arm Dragon? It's so powerful. I mean, saying no to this deck basically dooms me to losing to it if Alex picks it. <sighs> Take my soul, darkness. I'm going in. <sighs> I gotta be honest with you guys. I'm, I'm still so tilted about that crush card in the last episode i wouldn't be in the shirt how else would i have known that if i would have crush carded joseph that i was going to lose the game because of it what are the fucking chances of that happening it's my own fault i should have just looked in the graveyard i could have figured out what was left i would have not flipped the crush card 
and I wouldn't be sitting in this fucking shirt. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the introduction of the Duelist Genesis and the introduction of Synchro Monsters. I can't believe we're already at this point in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. It seems like we were just doing 2002 yesterday, but here we are. Now, before we go diving into Teledad, because let's be honest, that's what you're going to see a lot of coming up here. There wasn't exactly Teledad straight out of the gate. There was, don't get me wrong, but the format hadn't crystallized to that point as of yet. Of course, Dark Arm Dragon was the premier threat. Gladiator Beast also received some new support, not from Duelist Genesis, but from previous sets, actually. Gladiator Beast War Chariot was released in uh, Legendary Collection GX2 or something like that, as well as Gladiator Beast Equest. And so, while it didn't actually get any support from Duelist Genesis, some of the other side sets did give this deck a bit of a boost. Light Sworn also does reasonably well around this time as well, because Charge of the Light Brigade was a secret rare in the Duelist Genesis. Genesis, so this got multiple tops, one of which from Asian Persuasion, Mr. Johnny Nguyen, so that's going to be fun if we spin that. And then Zombies as well. It's not exactly full-on Zombie Synchro, but because you have so much recursion capability, being able to just go and just Synchro off into more and more cards is pretty nice. Not to mention Mizuki is now legal, courtesy of Premium Pack. So, we're going to go ahead and spin. Because we lost, we do only have two spins, so let's do our first one and see what we are going to get. Gladiator Beast is a decent deck, but I think I want something a little bit different. I'm really aiming here for Light Sworn or Teledad, so I think that's what we're going to go for. Oh yeah! So here's the list. What is in front of you is Paul Levitin's 2008 Teledad deck list. Now, all the Canadians at SJC Baltimore were playing either this list or a very close approximation of it. He was one of the first people to figure out this deck was good and played it to amazing success. However, it was not enough to take down this tournament. That's a little bit of what gives me pause. Gladiator Beast is still a very powerful deck, but Dark Arm Dragon in the coming months would not take SJC Baltimore, but take in order SJC Tulsa in September of 2008, SJC Seattle Battle in October of 2008, SJC Chicago in November of 2008, SJC Atlanta in November of 2008, SJC Detroit in December of 2008, SJC San Francisco in January of 2009, and SJC Houston in January of 2009. For a long time, Teledad was all that was worth playing in a way that no other deck has been all that is worth playing before or since. This is as close to a tier 0 format as Yu-Gi-Oh has ever had, and with any luck, will ever have again. And we get to try it out first. Oh, I'm so excited. So provided that Simo didn't pull exactly this deck, I'm feeling pretty good about our chances. This can wipe the floor with almost anything. If you read the coverage of this event, it's clear that Levitin's loss in semis was due to a brick. So as long as we can prevent that happening in this deck that is amazingly consistent, I think we have a really good shot of taking the entire thing. The strategy of this deck differs than previous dad strategies. In the past, we were playing Destiny Hero Malicious to thin our deck and to discard to Destiny Draw. It's a way to make sure that your future draws are good and manipulate the amount of dark monsters in your graveyard, but here, it's advantage. With Destiny Hero Malicious and the first really good tuner, Krebons, we can emergency teleport out this card and go into an 8-star Synchro, and boy oh boy do we have a lot of good ones. That's a secondary game plan to of course Dark Arm Dragon himself, semi-limited to 2 here, but still very accessible. We draw a ton of cards in this deck, so it's not too shocking to find this sucker. I'll give you the individual cards real quick, but it's a lot of stuff you know already. 1 Breaker the Magical Warrior, 2 Caius, 2 DD Crow, 2 Dark Arm Dragon, 2 Dark Greffer, much better than it was previously because sending malicious is just so much higher impact because we're no longer playing a uh, disc commander thank god by the way that seemed to be the only way we would brick ourselves into a loss we're on some pretty bad destiny heroes doom lord is the most digestible of these monsters fearmonger shows up again i know i'm gonna brick on this asshole three destiny hero malicious an elemental hero stratos three krebons two necro Gardena, still so fantastic versus gladiator beast sangan three allure of darkness brain control triple d draw triple emergency teleport giant trunade heavy storm monster reborn reinforcement of the army x3 can't believe this card was unlimited ever crush card virus double phoenix wing wind blast torrential tribute 
and trap dust shoot in the side. We've got Neospatian Grand Mole. This jerk shows up again. Mind Control, MST, Double Bottomless, Double Dust Tornado, Triple Light Imprisoning Mirror to beat JD exactly. Mind Crush, Mirror Force, and Pulling the Rug for Monarch. In the extra, we've got Thought Ruler Archfiend. So difficult of a boss for many decks to remove. Triple Stardust Dragon, a super powerful destruction negator. We've got Red Dragon Archfiend, who attacks like nobody's business. Magical Android, who comes up occasionally when you need to gain life. Goyo Guardian. I shouldn't have to tell you this card is broken, but keep in mind we're playing with the pre-eroded version, which doesn't even need an Earth Tuner. And Colossal Fighter, if you're unfamiliar, does not say another warrior monster in your graveyard. Finally, we're on a Parshath and a Geyserus. All in all, I'm super excited to try this deck out. It's adaptable, it's consistent, it's powerful, and I think it's exactly what I need to tie up this series. Okay, so I realize that we're gonna be seeing a lot of Teledad, but I have two excuses. A, I think it's good to actually showcase what Teledad looked like upon its first arrival into the TCG, and B, I actually didn't have any more spins on the wheel, so I'm kind of stuck with it. So this is the deck we are bringing to today's duel. This is Adam Korn's first place list. This is actually rather difficult to find, but we did manage to eventually unearth it. And uh, it's definitely dad in its newest incarnation. What's funny is that a lot of changes were actually made to the ban list right before the release of Duelist Genesis. Dark Realm Dragon's now with two, but that didn't stop it from being the most terrifying deck in the format. So let's go ahead and do the card by card. We have Caius for banishing stuff upon tribute summon. We have a DD Crow to mess up the graveyard. This is really Really good especially in mirror matches i guess it's good all around because with like light sworn and glad there's usually going to be something to hit with crow anyway two copies of dad if you slam this down you probably win the game dark greffer to load up the graveyard diamond dude is cool because we're playing 16 spells in the deck and most of them can actually just be triggered off of it so that's pretty nice one copy of doom lord this is a card that has seen a little bit of play in the past i think we were playing it in maybe one or two decks previously in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. you can banish a monster and then like on the second turn it comes back so it's a way to like remove stuff that might be difficult to take care of otherwise three copies of malicious this now returned to three copies courtesy of the ban list and i think that's kind of insane that for synchro summoning they thought hmm let's put malicious back to three to just enable the absolute nonsense with Krebons, our next card which is the newest card out of the duelist genesis it's a level two tuner the effect is actually kind of relevant if it's targeted for an attack you can pay it 100 and negate the attack so it can actually like defend itself but more importantly it's a level two tuner we can fetch off of emergency teleport to to go into our swath of powerful level eight synchros. The reason this helped make Dark Arm Dragon decks so much more formidable is that you had an outlet now to easily load up the graveyard with darks and then just drop Dark Arm Dragon on top of it. But then you're protecting it with cards like Stardust Dragon, maybe going into Goyo Guardian. It just gets really nasty really quick. It just gets really nasty really quickly. We've got a Mystic Tomato to tutor into a bunch of our smaller monsters. We can get Mali with this, which is actually pretty sick. Necro Gardener to withstand just being OTK'd seems pretty good. Sang can fetch most of the smaller monsters in the deck and one snipe hunter to be able to load up the grave pop some cards and be able to set up for dark arm dragon for the spells three allure of darkness i love how they semi-limited dark arm dragon during this format but then put allure of darkness back to three that's just mind-blowing to me but it is what it is one brain control brain control and cards that take control of your opponent's monsters get much better now that we have synchro monsters because as long as you have a tuner or i guess if you take a tuner your opponent has and have a non-tuner you're then able to actually get rid of those monsters Monsters, so your opponent doesn't get them back. Three Destiny, draw to cycle through the deck and get Malicious Engraved. Three e Telly. Uh, this is not once per turn, which is also just absurd and one of the reasons why this deck was so good. One Gold Sark just to get to anything we might need. One Heavy Storm to clean up the field. Monster Reborn, Mystical Space Typhoon, and two Reinforcement of the Army, since a lot of the best cards in our deck are in fact Warrior. And then for the traps, one Crush Card. Crush Card's still an absolute blowout in this format, unless you use it incorrectly, like I seem to do. Two Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. This is good to set your opponent back a turn, but also get some much needed cards into the graveyard three solemn judgment just an all-star of the format and one torrential tribute for the extra deck geyser is colossal fighters pretty neat because it's a card that actually comes back if it's killed by battle Two goyo guardian this card is just so broken uh don't mind this right here where it says one earth tuner goyo guardian actually received a errata much later on to make it slightly worse but this is actually a generic synchro that you can summon as long as you can have level six magical android is here just if you need it i guess two red dragon archfiend to just nuke stuff 
three Stardust Dragon. This is probably the best Synchro and the one you're going to go into the most. And the second most likely is Thought Ruler Archfiend. This card's cool because it gains you life points, but also can uh, negate the activations of spells and traps that target exactly a Psychic Monster, which primarily is going to be Thought Ruler Archfiend. And then for the side deck, two copies of Destiny Hero Defender. This does synergize with the deck because we do have Destiny Draw, but compared with a card like Skill Drain, going up against a deck like Gladiator Beast, if you're negating the effects of all of their cards and you have a Defender sitting face up, they're not going to get the draw and it's almost impossible for them to get over that wall. So that's kind of cool. Kaigu to be able to banish stuff out of the grave seems pretty good. Grand Mold to clear annoying threats out of the way. I actually did make a mistake here. I have two Spirit Reaper, but it should be two Zombira the Dark. I got to be honest, I do not know why this is in here. The only thing I can possibly think of is that it's large enough to hit over most normal summons in the game. It can also like crash with like a Laquari if you're going up against Glad specifically. So like maybe that's relevant. I guess if you skill drain it too, it's a 2100 body that is very difficult to deal with. So maybe that was part of the side decking plan here, I guess. Giant Trunade functionally is Heavy Storm just to clear the way for an OTK. Two Compulse to bounce stuff back. Two Dust Tornado to get rid of some spells and traps. And of course, the three Skill Drain. I can't wait to see what Joseph brought. And hopefully it's not a mirror match to start because that would actually be pretty sad. But we'll have to see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Synchro Day, Joseph. I'm, this is so exciting. I can't believe we're already at the Synchro era. It seemed like six years of Yu-Gi-Oh have just flown by in a matter of months, and that's actually exactly what's happened. But it's it's cool, right? I mean, we've just been just flying through all of these different eras of Yu-Gi-Oh, and this is a pretty special one for a lot of people. You're, you're excited. Uh, I am a little fearful. Because while <laughs> Synchros were already a little hard to stomach for a lot of the boomer player base who refused to touch anything in the extra deck that wasn't purple, it was only exacerbated by one of the worst formats that lasted the longest ever. And, uh... Fair. <laughs> I, I guess I'm trying to, like, get some of the excitement out now before we just go into the miserable match that we're about to play. Not just this time, but for the next several episodes in the future. So, yeah, yeah every, gotta, gotta everything for excited. the algorithm here. Folks, <laughs> pretend you're excited for synchros. We're going to need your enthusiasm for the next little bit. This is going to be a rough series of episodes. To be fair, the synchros do add a new dynamic, right? I mean, having a toolbox that you can just access at like any time, that's one of the things that makes Yu-Gi-Oh so unique. It's one of the yeah. things that actually a lot of people really enjoy about the game that differentiates it from other card games. And so hopefully we're going to get to show that off a little bit this episode. And uh, if not, we got uh, like 40 more that we're going to probably show it off to some degree. You ready, buddy? <laughs> I am ready, as ready as I'll ever be. All right, uh, I got the rock, paper, scissors generator up, so go ahead and give me that number, and uh, good luck. Hmm. All right, let me get the number of refreshes of how long Teledad was meta. No, I actually don't want you to refresh 16 times. Uh, let me just get two. <laughs> let me get two of them. Two for the number of dads legal in this format. That's yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's how much, we're going to do it. One... <laughs> Oh, wow, what a shock. Oh, the, the completely impartial rock, paper, scissors generator has gifted It is you impartial. Again. It was paper the other two times. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll go first. Good luck, buddy. Good luck to you, too. All right. I'm glad we're both playing the oh, same geez. number of cards in our extra. It's so funny to me how, like, they didn't just play 15 cards. They're just like, nah, I don't want to max out on these. They're never going to come up. <laughs> well, to All be right. fair, there uh, were maybe two playable synchros at this time, so... Yeah, but they could have played, like, play sets of all of them, you know. Anyway, yeah. uh, we'll start with a D-draw, pitching Mally. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> what, Joseph? The the wheel. Uh, it, it was all the wheel's fault. You can't yeah, blame yeah, yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Hey, I got something for you, buddy. Uh, how about a DD crow on your fucking no! Mally? No, not the crow! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wheel oh, shmeal. Fine. Get that card fine, out of the graveyard. Fine, fine. D draw the second one. I'm ready. Uh I'm not gonna be D drawing the second one. I'm gonna allure this time. Sure. It's uh not as pretty. Ugh. Uh we'll get rid of this necro gardener. Huh. This is not very exciting, actually. I'm gonna set one pass. <laughs> go draw ahead. Draw for turn. Is it a dust shoot? <laughs> nope, it's not. Alright, I'll go to main one. Looks like we have uh we have entered the age of dad a little early. I'll fire off an allure of darkness. Oh no, it's a mirror! As soon as I saw a crow, I thought that might happen, but some decks were main decking it too, I think. Fuck, yeah, okay. I saw good. the two, the 12 and the extra, and I went, no, come on, no, come <laughs> on. Oh 
my god. Okay, I'm just gonna ask this now because since we know what the other person's playing, did you re-roll or like was this your first pick? So it was my first pick, and then I re-rolled and I got it two more times. <laughs> Shut up, really? Okay, yeah. in my defense, I actually got glad first. I was trying uh, to get light sworn and I ended up getting dad. It was the other side of the wheel, unfortunately. All right, banish for your allure. Yeah, I just don't want to. These cards are all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll banish uh, Caius the Shadow Monarch. All right, that seems fine. I'm going to normal a breaker here. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right, I will break this set card. The Judgment. Uh, I could have opted to kill the breaker, but that puts me dangerously in range of getting killed. I so was going to say, I probably didn't... not a particularly good idea. No, not fantastic. All right, let's get in for uh, 16 here. I'll happily take 16 over 4,000. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm cool just passing here, I think. I feel like we're going to be doing that a lot. All right, uh, what are we going to do now? I'll start with an allure. <laughs> Go off, king. I mean, we're trying, buddy. Yeah, I'm in the same predicament as you. I don't want to banish any of these cards. They're all amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um. The good news is, despite the fact that you're up seven cards on me right now, uh, you don't have a Mally in the grave. You don't have a anything close to three in grave for a dark arm dragon. So I'm hoping I at least have one more turn before I actually have to start committing. All right. It's not super ideal. I actually think I'm going to banish a dad off of this allure. Uh, I'm going to normal summon dark greffer. <laughs> uh, speaking of not great uh, for me. Yeah. Dark greffer is yeah. fine. We can get over the breaker for a hundred, which I'll is okay. I'm feeling super hype about it though uh i will just pass on that go ahead buddy it's funny for how much we've hyped this episode up uh this has just been like the most boring series of turns to start things off oh no it's about to get fucking crazy i'm just deciding oh. how crazy i want it to get oh oh that's not good all right you've got one two three four five cards in hand uh okay there's no good way to make this all happen at once is the problem I'm either one monster or one card off. I see. Uh, Been there. Been there. And if I pass, I, I will be able to do it on the crackback. Sure. My fear here is that you have everything already. You have, like, an outlet for Dark Greffer. You have maybe a second Dark Greffer. You desperately need a third card in your graveyard. So to get it there, you want me to kill the Dark Greffer so you can land a dab. I don't have a super clean out to a dad from you. And I think without the dad, there is no conceivable way you're going to OTK me. Because pitching Mally for Dark Greffer and e telling into Krebons is still only about 47. You're going to have another one of those uh, history of Yu-Gi-Oh moments where you predict my entire hand and then die as a result. For what it's worth, I think all of your assumptions are sound, regardless of what's in my hand or not. This is so fucking bad. This is such <laughs> a bad play. I know it's bad, so everyone in the comments telling me I'm bad, I don't know how to play fucking Dark Arm Dragon Mirrors. You're right, okay? You're correct. <laughs> okay. So here's the problem. I'm going to Dark Refer Effect sending Dark Arm Dragon. And I do have the emergency teleport. Okay, I can't, so... There's only one way to get exactly three dark monsters into the graveyard. And it's by crashing my dark greffer into your dark greffer and landing dad on an empty board, which sucks shit. So instead, I'm going to dark greffer here to summon Krebons. Well, are you e telling first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to chain e telly yeah. to the effect of dark greffer. Right, right. Okay, so you're chaining e telly and then now you're sending with greffer. I'm going to send a Mally to the graveyard. Uh, yeah, that's fine. All right, now time for the <laughs> shitty part. I, I have the read on you having a Dark Greffer. If you have a Dark Greffer and a Dark-type monster, maybe a DD Crow that you are just sitting on because you need something to discard on the next turn, but you can't get to three otherwise. Putting the Dark Greffer in Graveyard puts me dead to your Dark Arm Dragon, which I imagine you also have because otherwise you probably wouldn't have banished it for the Allure of Darkness. So instead, I'm going to banish this Mally, summon one from deck, and on the resolution of you doing that, I am going to crow you here. Ah, okay. So the crow was right. Who would you like gone? Uh, I mean, I guess I'll just get rid of the dad. That's fine. I am actually going to sink the Greffer and the Krebons away for a Goyo Guardian. And there's the first synchro in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yep. All right. So this keeps a dark out of your graveyard is the theory behind it. And it doesn't sure. die to a significant amount of your setup plays. So I'm going to go for the Greffer I, here. I'm just going to give it to you, even though it will die. Uh, so I will take 1100 and then Goyo's effect. You will get to steal it out of my graveyard. Yep. And I'll go in as well. Sink the eight. Sure. Now I will link off for a cross crusader. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, buddy. All right. We will draw... Ooh, actually surprised that's... you didn't shotgun that crow on the malicious to the graveyard. Shit. I'm well, gonna... it wouldn't have done anything because then it would have put exactly three 
uh, grave, darks right. and grave for you. So this way, it you had uh, there was a line you could have done. You could have like crashed Greffers and then just like uh, just gotten Dad that way. If you can't kill me, I don't know exactly how incentivized you are to do that. Right. So it's a bit strange. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, and now we're going to start to unload some cards here. Uh, I'm going to brain control your Goyo. Not sexy. Sure. I'll take that. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go battle phase. I'm gonna attack over your Mali and steal it. I'm not super happy about that, being honest. <laughs> yeah, uh, so you'll take 2k from that as well. Then main two, I'm gonna normal summon this Krebons. Figured you had the Krebons. That's a good way to get rid of my Goyo Guardian here. Yeah, that was pretty nice. Now, I have a couple of options here. Uh, Stardust is like okay, but the problem is is that you have a Greffer on field. So if you have any way to get to a Krebons, you can just like make Goyo and hit over it. So I'm not like, that's that's like the problem, right? Like Goyo right. can just hit over like all this crap in the, in the format. And that's so irritating. And if there was something they were playing multiple of, they were playing multiple Goyo. Don't have to worry about dad all that much now because you've got a decent amount of darks in grave. Okay, I'm going to make the Stardust. I'm not happy about it, but I think it's okay. I'm also going to reborn your Goyo. Oh, well, that's just fucking annoying. Sure. Just so you can't reborn it in case you have it. Uh, that's like one of your ways to out it. So, I mean, you've got ways to get rid of it. So I'll just pass on this. Go ahead, buddy. You spent 45 minutes being like, ah, I guess this is going to be as good as it gets. Stardust no. Goyo. <laughs> I had a f I had the converging lines because I had the ability with the reborn to like take your Krebons and like get rid of the Mali and the Krebons to make like another eight. So I was like, I was debating between like four different ways to do this. I was also thinking about going into something like uh, Red Dragon Archfiend or like Colossal Fighter. So there was a lot. There was a lot. Okay, so I've got the Dark Greffer, an effect declaration here. I'm going to send this Necro Gardena to the graveyard. That's a good one. Sure. We are going to send the other Necro Gardena. I'm going to go to combat. We're going to attack into the Mali. Second main will banish the Mali, grab a Mali, and unfortunately, that is uh, just about all I have doing. Uh, you are good to go, buddy. I also did that with Mali too, so that way if you wanted it back, it'd be in a post-combat phase scenario, so pretty right. happy about it. Uh, let's go ahead and fire a D-drop, hitch the Mali. Son of a bitch. Wow, that is so annoying. Yep. Anything on res? I have nothing on res. Okay, so you've got two Necro Gardeners that I am going to have to play through here, which is pretty annoying, not going to lie. With that said, let's go ahead and bring out this Mystic Tomato. I will go to battle. I will hit Tomato over the Mali. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And that is your last Mali, which is nice. So I guess we just make you waste them. Uh, I'll take 800 here. Okay, sure. And then 28? Uh, this one on the gate. Main two, I think I'm just gonna set one and pass. Go ahead, buddy. Stand by main. Yep. Heavy storm. I will chain the E-Telly. Okay, that's a good one. Let's get the Krebons. Finally, a fucking heavy storm. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go Rota here. I'm gonna grab a Stratos. I'm gonna normal the Stratos and trigger its effect. Let's get my favorite card in the deck. Do you know what it is, buddy? You got an idea of what uh, I might be referring to? I'm gonna to. guess it's. I, oh, it's Fearmonger. You're actually on Fearmonger in this. Okay, uh, okay. Not me, buddy. Not me. <laughs> All right. Uh, this D draw has been rotting in my hand, so let's get that. Oh, card. that's nice. Okay, you finally get to do that. That's good. Awesome. Uh, e Telly. That's good. Sure. Uh, I'm going to grab a Krebons from deck. Sounds good. And then I am going to sink off for a Goyo Guardian. Okay, go to the battle phase. I'm going to attack into your Stardust Dragon. I will take three. You will take control of it. Yep, I will take it in defense. It's not as sexy as it could be because of the way your Goyo interacts with it. Uh, but, you know, uh, say la vie. All right, uh, second main, nothing. I will pass turn. Enjoy the end of your Krebin. Krebons goes. I will draw. That's actually really funny uh, <laughs> because my top deck was another e telly. How is that funny? <laughs> it's, it's funny for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. We will get the Krebons here. And I assume we're just making a second Goyo. It seems like it makes sense to me. Bring him out. Yep. Battle. Uh, I will take my Stardust back, sir. There you go. And I will crash our other Goyos. I will Gardena here. Oh, okay. That's true. That's true. Are we just going to be trading Goyos this whole time? Well, I certainly hope not. <laughs> Go uh, ahead. I'll draw for turn. Stand by me. Did forget about the second guard. Now I thought this was a one of, but that's Combat okay. Goyo into Stardust. Sure. You can have it back. <laughs> oh, this is fun. The fucking ping pong Stardust. <laughs> Thankfully, it's now gone forever. Kaya's time. Let's get one of these Goyos. Ooh, that's pretty good. Sure. 
Uh, which one would you like to banish, sir? Let me get the fresh one. <laughs> sure, that's fine. All right, you're good to go, buddy. We'll draw. Yeah, if you're hmm. looking for dad, you're way the fuck off. <laughs> dad will not be making an appearance for the remainder of this game. I guess we're just going to resume the fun of the ping pong match here. I'll go to battle. I'll take your Caius, I guess. I'll take four. Enjoy my Caius, <laughs> buckaroo. Yeah, it's it's a great card to get right now. Goes to defense, unfortunately. Main two. I don't know the card in your hand, right? You do not. Okay. And it's a good uh, one. It's the best so. card in my deck, buckaroo. I might just pass here. Go ahead. Jesus. You know, I almost want to just crash. I almost <laughs> want to just put an end to this Goyo Guardian bullshit. Because <sighs> I know if one of us ends up with a Goyo Guardian, it's going to be yep. bad news for me. You've already used your Reborn, so there would be pretty much no way for you to bring it back while I still have a couple of copies in my deck. But I really don't want to... your Burial's banned, too. I really don't want to leave you with a six on your side of the field because of Kreebons. You've been through all three, but I guess it's the same outs. I don't hate crashing, honestly. I can see I thought about it, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely thinking about it. I'm considering it very highly. Oh, why do you make me do this, buddy? Why do I make you think? Oh, heaven forbid, Joseph. Heaven forbid, <laughs> indeed. All right, uh, I'm going to set one card, one card. Let's get into that motherfucker. You're going to do it? No, I'm taking my <laughs> Kai's Oh, back. no fun. Give me my Kai's no back, buddy. Fun. I have to overlay for Beatrice. Whatever, I'll draw. Let's start with a heavy. I knew you were sitting on a heavy, but uh, unfortunately for you, I'm sitting on a fucking dust chute. <laughs> oh, I, okay, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see. I don't know if I have any targets for this, but I will fire a Rota. You've got to. <laughs> Aren't you on Stratos? No, actually. This deck is not on Stratos, if you can uh, believe that. I, I mean, I believe it. I don't think it's very correct you should have another yeah. uh, i have crack. targets well i mean that's a solution here and you know given the circumstances it might be the best solution with my reinforcement of the army no this is 100 percent better i am going to take destiny hero doom lord what the hell <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> I am going to normal summon the Doom Lord and activate the effect banishing Goyo Guardian. <laughs> See you in two turns, fucker. I will just go to battle. I'll hit the Caius to take Whoa. it back. Hey, did you read your card? Ah, uh, you thought this oh. card would be my doom, but in fact, oh. it's going to be your doom, asshole. Destiny wow. Hero Doom yep. Lord sucks. <laughs> yep, it does suck. You're right. Okay, well, you know, that's what we get for not reading. I thought it was just he couldn't attack. I didn't realize that I can't declare an attack with anything. Nope. Go ahead. Soul Exchange <laughs> Gaming. Do 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 yep. do do do. Oh, fuck. This sucks. All right, well, at least I get some damage in. You right, can so, get damage in, yeah. Uh, I guess I will switch my fucking Caius to attack position. Sure. Uh, let's walk into the Doom Lord here. I'll take 1,800. Jesus Christ. All right, enjoy your turn. That's standby right, one. Will. Uh, standby one, Goya will be returning eventually to us here shortly. It's not great. Uh, what would you set? All right, well, I'm always taking the Caius. Like, that's always happening. Uh, now that I can actually legally declare an attack. So, unfortunate. So, we'll take him. Uh, main two... I also like your idea of setting, and I'm also going to get this Mally out of my deck that's been sitting here. Oh, I was time. hoping you would just not remember ever. <laughs> no, I remembered. I, uh, I I probably misplayed when I had the, the Krebons earlier, and I could have gone into something bigger instead of making another Goyo. Two Goyos is fun, but I mean, kind of just going to wall up here. So go ahead. All right, not for nothing, but my draws have been ass and a half. Can I get one live draw here? Dad. <laughs> shouldn't have asked i figured it was sand again yeah all Going right so mally, mally does that's scary because that could be something very bad uh second standby phase your goyo returns i believe fun main one that does work that way right it's not like if it gets killed it like doesn't come back that would seem way too broken oh doom lord no 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 it returns yeah i figured okay yeah that's that's fair guess we'll switch this bad boy to attack position Yep, are we got finally uh, going to see the fabled Goyo crash? We might, actually. So, the back row cards could be... Crush card is probably just game-winning at this point. All right, show me something. Oh, you are taking this hit. I'm not going to show you anything for this. That's fine. Okay. Uh, then I will attack with into Sangin. I'll take 14 here and trigger Sangin. I am going to grab Doom Lord. Main two. I'm going to allure here. Oh, God. Yeah? I will banish Snipe Hunter. Here's a fun question. Have a follow up too. Who does Caius return to if I Doom Lord? Oh, great. We're going to have that Rulings Nightmare too. That's yep. good. 
All right, I'll make the decision slightly more difficult for you. I'm going to sack Sangan for my Caius. Target the back row and trigger Sangan. That's fine. Okay. It was a D draw. D draw. Okay. Well, that's not bad. I mean, at least you can't get rid of the Doom Lord now, but I don't think you want to necessarily. I will grab Diamond Dude. You're on Diamond Dude. Sure. We are on Diamond Dude. I will set one and pass the turn. This has been a hell of a game, and this is game one. I gotta say, I'm impressed. Uh, Rhoda. Oh god, yeah, that's good. You even have a target? Yeah, you probably do. I do. Oh, you have a Greffer. Okay. Oh, you had to have Your a Your hand is Greffer? Greffer Doom Lord. Dad's offline, so that's not really gonna do enough here. You and me both, buddy. You and me both. I have to do this. It's so bad, but I have to do this. Uh, I'm gonna True Nade. Okay, sure. <laughs> then I'm gonna normal Doom Lord. Uh, I'm gonna go Which for- Which one are you gonna banish? I'm gonna go for my Caius. Okay. We're gonna have to look that up unless the game ends before it, so we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Uh, you are good to go. Okay. We'll draw. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm gonna normal summon Diamond Dude. Yeah. This is actually a hundred off of lethal. Yeah, I know. I had to do the math. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll hit in with everything. That's 18 off this. Yeah. Uh, main two fire diamond dude. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a good one. Uh, I will set two this time actually and pass. Yep. Turn one on doom Lord, right? It is turn one. Okay. We'll figure it out next turn unless you're dead here, <laughs> but we'll see. I think I might be. Yep, the draw for turn was Crush Card Virus, and unfortunately, wow. last card Dark Refer is not going to be enough. No. Oh, what a wow! Leader. What a game one! Alex, how many more monsters did you have in your deck? I had a single Dark Arm Dragon, and that was it. I saw when I searched for the road. <laughs> You telling me I was one Caius off? Oh. It's okay. It's okay. I lost the die roll. These are screwy games. I'm gonna go first. I'm gonna blow out your back walls. Maybe. You know, I, I think that could definitely be a possibility. Good luck, buddy. Good luck Let's to see you too. It. Maybe not with this hand. Okay. Oh. Well, that's a little bit better. Okay, we're gonna start with. Uh, I'm gonna grab Dark Refer. Okay. That's a good start. I'm gonna normal Dark Refer. Trigger his effect. Sure. I'm going to pitch a map. That's really good, yeah. We are going to send a Necro Gardener. Load uh, up on that, sure. Mali effect. Hello, Dueling Book. There we go. It just, the, the forces of Dueling Book have conspired against me. All right. Uh, we do have the E-Telly. That's good, yep. Uh, deciding what I want to do here. So, I know- your you lines? You, you could just make a Goyo, but that doesn't seem like, I mean, that's like okay, yeah, right? So uh, I you could just make Stardust. The only real considerations here are Stardust or Thought Ruler Archfiend. Uh, Stardust is if I have you on like a fucking Dark Hole or Raigeki, which I don't think I do. Thought Ruler Archfiend is if I have you on uh, like Brain Control, which I saw in the last game. Right. Uh, so I, I am going to, I think, go for the Thought Ruler here, uh, as stupid as that seems, uh, because I can always just Mally next turn. Who gives a shit? Uh, yeah. Speaking of, let's just go for the Mally now. No reason to beat around the bush, uh, and I don't sure. want to draw that shit. I also think it's just incredible that they put Mally to three at the dawn of this format. Why? The, 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 just brilliant thinking. Why brilliant did they do thinking. it? Couldn't tell. I think we are always firing this allure of darkness to start. All good. We'll do that. Wow, that is fantastic. Uh, we're going to get rid of our good friend, Doom Lord. Uh, oh, so sad to you. see him go, but mm -hmm. he did serve his purpose. Well, I do have the brain control, but okay. I'm not going to go after the Thought Ruler, unfortunately. I'm actually going to take your Greffer. Yeah, that's fine. There we go. So we'll take the Greffer, and then I think the next thing to do is to fire off this emergency teleport. Yeah, that's fine. We'll grab ourselves a Krebon. Yeah. Let's go ahead and sync them up, sync them up, sync them up. Yep. Let's make a Goyo. Now, it's not fantastic, though, because you do have the Necro Gardener, so, like, you can defend against this. Not really too much I can do about it. Unfortunately, it just kind of puts up a big dude, uh, so we're going to force you to use it here. I mean, I, I will use it. And then, uh, main two, uh, I'm going to Gold Sark. Oh, God, okay. Uh, we'll banish the big boy. Not as good when you know about it, but we will just banish him for now. I think I will set one, and I'll pass it over to you. Okay, I'll draw for turn, stand by main. Uh, okay. Uh, I will normal summon Krebins. Is that okay? I figured you had one, just having the set 
set up either way for the Mali or the Greffer seem pretty good. All right, uh, we're going to make an eight, trying to decide which one I want to make. The targets here are Colossal Fighter or Red Dragon Archfiend. Those are two that I'm considering. Stardust, of course, is also very based, but I need something to get over the fucking Goyo Guardian. 2800 level six seems fair, right? right I am going to go for the Colossal Fighter here. So he is actually a 3000 attacker because he gains 100 for every warrior, correct? Yep. And we'll walk. Oh, in any graveyard, actually. So, oh, I don't have any. I will take 200 here. All right. And we'll go 27 direct. We'll take it. Go ahead, Buckaroo. Turn one on our lovely card, Gold Sarcophagus. I will just set a card and pass it over. I'll draw for turn. Could be like a tomato I saw last game. Could just be a bluff because you need the third dark engrave. Uh, I'm going to normal dark graffer. Sure. Can't be Mirror Force. You would have done that previously. Eh, shit. Let's just go to combat. Greffer into the set card. Yeah, you got oh. it. Uh, my hand was not looking good that game. <laughs>if that was like the speed I was expecting these games to go, not that like first game grind fest that we had, that that was a bit more indicative of what I was expecting. I can't but... wait for us to watch it back and it's going to be like we both had <laughs> lethal 45 times and the comments are going to be like, you people don't know anything about anything. And oh, probably. To their credit, they're right. They're 100% right. All right, good luck, buddy. Hey, uh, good luck I will too. go Jerk ahead off. and start with a lovely copy of Reinforcement of the Army. I still find it so weird that this deck wasn't playing Stratos. Right. I kind of can understand why, but at the same time, I'm just asking why. It just seems so good. I understand why, but why? All right, I'm going to grab our good old friend, Diamond Dude. Why the f You must already have the D-draw. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that's no 100 way you're picking a card why. that yeah. shitty. That's why I wished this deck had Stratos, because then I could have just searched the Mali, but unfortunately, you know, it, you know, it's not going to happen that way, it looks like. Okay, <laughs> uh, that's something. It's so weird. It's like, I partially just don't even want to do anything. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, <laughs> passing is not terrible. I think I'm going to set a couple, and I'll pass it over. Just putting yourself dead to heavy, no big deal. Show me the dust shoot. Yeah, no dust shoot. Main one, we're going to start with an alert. Sure. All right. Uh, suck my butt, wee wee breath. Oh, what am I banishing? You kind of have to finish the card. God, this is such a hard one. What do I even I banish? feel like every allure has been hard to resolve unless we only had like a single dark to be able to use it for. I guess I'll banish Fearmonger. Piece of shit, oh, useless card. Out of my deck. How dare you disrespect the Fearmonger? Out of my fucking deck. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go three and you're good to go. Uh, draw. We play the game of what would you set? I feel like the most likely candidates to be set in this deck, Sangen, which obviously we both know we're playing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a Mystic Tomato as well. I don't know if you're on it, but you've seen me on it. Mm -hmm. Spirit Reaper, you know, you did mention it. That is a possibility, I suppose, as well. All right, let's go ahead and start with a Dark Greffer. Would you like to do something with Pryo? I would like to activate the effect <laughs> by pitching this Mally. Not a lot I can do about that. I suppose I'll dump this Necro Guard now. Seems okay. Uh, that's the wrong zone. Ooh, that's three, isn't it? Yeah, you have anything on res? No, I don't think so. Okay. I do have the dad, though. Uh, would you like to do anything with Pryo? I would like to banish, and uh, let's go for this one. I will chain TT. Do you have a response? I do have judgment. Sure. So if you have one, show it to me. Uh, I don't. Okay. However, I'm the smartest motherfucker on the planet. At res, I'll activate crush card virus, tributing my DD crow. You are the smartest motherfucker on the planet. That is correct. All right. Oh well, my that was God. Fun. Holy shit. I can't believe that worked. I literally was like, if he has solemn judgment, the play is to wait for him to bait out the dad, then go for the dad targeting the torrential tribute. That's the only scenario in which this was correct. Holy shit. I'm such a yep. fucking genius. Unfortunately, I mean, I don't know what other choice I had. I'm not going to let you torrential my board. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's brain control e telly. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's unfortunately, it's, it's not still fantastic. pretty good. Yeah. Like it's fine. But, you know, now we're just out of morons, I suppose. Uh, All right. What's the next move? Oh, crush card. How I love thee. <laughs> you consider <sighs> considering passing again. <laughs> kind of. I'm not against it. I'll be honest. Yep. Go ahead. I'm, I'm just passing. All right. I'll draw for turn. Stand by me. Breaker time. I'm going to break that set part. Parental time. Oh, okay. Whee. I'm like, it's got to be breaker. I was hoping you would just commit into it, but unfortunately that was not the case. I'll draw. Uh, thankfully, it's a Rota, so that actually plays around crush card. That sucks for me. Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, we'll fire it. I don't even know if I have a target, and it is the best card in Yu-Gi-Oh, the Destiny Hero Doom Lord. <laughs> yeah, it could be worse. You can make, like, a magical android here. Uh, I'm going to banish Mally. Get the Mally out of my deck. Yep. Uh, we'll eat Telly. Yep. Go for the Krebons. Yep. And I guess we'll sink here. 
Sure. I think I want to go for, uh, it's the same predicament you were saying earlier between like Stardust and Thought Ruler. They each offer their own layers of protection, but then it's so hard to tell. Uh, there's also an argument, funny enough, for like Colossal Fighter, just because it's the biggest and like you can't Goyo it. Yeah, and like, like the thing guy. I'm the most concerned with is like getting anything I summoned Goyoed because that just like probably loses me the game on the spot. So it's like play around Goyo or play around cards that specifically target a monster or play around cards that destroy right. so it's like pick your pick your you know ideal flavor of synchro ideally there isn't like tons of destruction that we have access to so i'm not like i don't think stardust is correct thought ruler i mean what what car, what spells and traps are thought rulering a or targeting a thought ruler right it's like brain control like maybe that's it like there's not many things none of them are ideal picks all you did was just summon breaker pass you also know the contents of my hand though I think I'm going to make Thought Ruler. Uh, 27. I wish it just, it just gained life points if it did damage. That would be a really cool effect right now. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Ah, uh, this is weird. I thought I might be punished for my hubris, and it looks like I am going to. Uh, I actually could get killed pretty easy from this position, I think. Uh, really? Yeah, this doesn't feel good, but uh, I'm going to set one pass. Interesting. Uh, so... We'll draw. This is the second turn on Crush Card. It's an Allure of Darkness. Buddy, come on. Remind me, I'm pretty sure if I use Allure, the cards that I draw are subject to Crush Card. They are, yeah. So I can talk out loud since you know my hand. I could just run out Doom Lord, banish your thing, and then not attack. That sounds terrible. Instead, I am going to fire this Allure. It's risky, but I think I need to dig. Okay, so the cards are Emergency Teleport and Emergency Teleport. Son of a Bitch, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> e telly, so e telly. We, will, we will get rid of the Doom Lord. <laughs> well, that's not the worst thing in the world. Well, I mean, you know I can't banish anything else. It has to be that. Okay, uh, I'm going to banish the Mally. Summon a Mally. Yeah. I will e telly out a Krebons. Yep. Uh, I'm going to sink here. I don't know what I'm sinking for, though. I think I like Stardust this time. I don't know what else you'd be destroying at this point. Battle, I'll sink into this. Just Krabbins, yeah. Krabbins, okay. So I gain 1,200 life points yep. thanks to Thought Ruler's effect, and I'll hit you for 25. Yep. Uh, main two, I'll just set one. I'll pass the turn. All right, so I know that it's e Telly. Sure. You do. Oh, potentially. I mean, it could be brain control, but let's be honest. It's probably e Telly. I guess it could be. Funny, though, how if you uh, were to summon a Dark Arm Dragon, how you have exactly 2,800 life points. <laughs> Yeah, it's... funny. I actually don't find it very funny at all, asshole. All right, uh, I'm gonna brain control, pay eight here. I'm gonna take your start. Gross. Sure. And then, uh, big shocker, it is Dark Arm Dragon. There's the boy. I'm gonna banish uh, Breaker, targeting your Thought Ruler Archfiend. Yep. I'm gonna banish Krebins, targeting your set card. I'll chain it, uh, but it will not matter because you can pop it. Oh! Yep. Holy shit! Okay, okay, now that we've finished, I have to say this. You missed lethal. I did? If you had brain controlled How my set card, lethal? you could have e call e called. It's I can't not brain a control your set. Oh, it has to be you a face up? You can't brain control your set. Yes, it has to be a face up. Oh, I'm dumb as fuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> Holy shit. I was shit. like, how did I miss lethal? There's no way. Uh, I still yeah. think that you did. Uh, if you had gone uh, Mally and the Krebins into Red Dragon Archfiend, e Telly to Krebins, attacked my face down with Krebins, it was Krebins. <laughs> yeah, but that's if I attacked <laughs> the Krebins the with Krebins. Krebins. Yeah. Right, exactly. Holy like that's shit. okay. So I guess like maybe you could make a read like oh. that, considering there's not a lot of things with big defense in this format. Um, I actually just am the biggest fucking idiot because there is a <sighs> necro garden in my graveyard. So technically, I wasn't dead there. Yeah, you also had to forget uh, so that for me to fun. do this. Uh, wow, yeah. this was a disaster. I've got MC D draw. <laughs> oh my god. It's uh, it's atrocious. Well, that's dad, folks. That's Dark Arm Dragon. That really just came down to me forgetting necro garden of all things. When am I ever gonna get good at this game? Oh. Never. Oh my god, hopefully never. <laughs> this was actually a very interesting uh, set of games, though. Like I said, I thought most of them were going to boil down to, like, our second game, where it's just, like, a clean, one-sided, like, not even close sort of game. This actually, I mean, there was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of, like, trying to play around different circumstances. And I think it was, uh, even though a lot of people, you know, look at this as the big, bad, boogeyman Tier 0 format, a lot of people like Tier 0 formats for the fact that you're able to specifically fine-tune decks in such a 
away and you know the matchup so well that it actually almost develops a certain form of Yu-Gi-Oh that people like to equate to chess in a lot of ways. All the cards are basically going to be the same for the most part, unless people are just bringing like just absolute weird blowout types of cards, which again, a tier zero format can facilitate. You're going to be exactly knowing every single card your opponent's deck like verbatim because it's most likely almost identical to yours. And so it creates for some fun scenarios where a lot of people actually prefer these types of formats because there's less variance as a result. I think it's cool that we got to show this off. Uh, it's funny that we were trying to avoid this and then we ended up playing it out anyway. But uh, it was I think it was definitely a good showing for sure. Jesus Christ, I'm sick of this format already. We're going to have what? <laughs> eight more weeks of this? We're no, by we're the way, eight more weeks. We are not this. condensing anything. We're going to play weekly as they did at the time. We're going to have 14 episodes of Dark Arm Dragon and then 14 more episodes of Plasma Dark Arm Dragon. Folks, if I guess that would be doing I guess I would be doing this format a, like a, a disservice otherwise if we didn't for the history of Yu-Gi-Oh say give people the full Dark Arm Dragon experience. But no, we're not going to be doing that. Holy shit, what a disaster. Um yeah, I mean it sucks that this one came down to Necro Gardena in graveyard. Uh, I didn't think I had another out outside of you just straight up forgetting it. Uh, as you pointed out so I aptly, forgot Necrogarda like every game this match. <laughs> like, I just kept forgetting it. It's the amnesthetic card text. Um, it, for what it's worth, uh, you did point out correctly, I'm at 28. So you with the brain control in hand complicated a lot of things. I had lethal a lot of turns in a row because I was sitting on my own BC, but you correctly went into Thought Ruler Archfiend. Uh, God, just what a frustrating series of games. Um, yep. But head and shoulders above anything else you could be playing. I mean, you saw how I popped off game two, how both of us... I mean, you popped off through a fucking crush card virus game three. Yeah. Uh, this deck was killer. It was... Uh, absolutely uh, monstrous in terms of both representation and raw power levels. Uh, Dark Arm Dragon being at two matters not even a little bit when you can just barf out synchro monsters. Italian Krebons being at three alongside Malicious is the real name of the game here. And holy guacamole, are those two cards not okay together? <laughs> no, not at all. And you would think after the last episode, losing to my own crush card virus, not looking in the graveyard, that I might have wanted to take a look in the graveyard this time around for actual effects. But no. I guess I haven't learned my lesson yet. One of these days, Joseph, one of these days. Oh, well, uh, you're uh, going to have to learn it pretty quick because as of this episode, the series is tied the fuck up. It is yep. tied up after tied 50 through my episodes. own. Yep, tied through my own stupidity. Uh, How fantastic. That's fitting, though. Yeah, that, yeah. that makes sense. And, and, yep, next time around, maybe we're going to do some more flavors of dad. Maybe we're going to do some of the decks that uh, we sh were trying to actually aim for this episode. Let's be honest, because I'm sure a bunch of people in the comments are already complaining. Oh, they were trying to do a dark arm mirror. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Well, maybe, but maybe that's the fun, wasn't. right? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's true. That's, that's true. true. I mean, and we've got a lot of room to play with it. Um, I talked about it in the deck building screen. Tulsa, Seattle, Chicago, Atlanta, uh, San Francisco, and Detroit yep. were all won by this deck, not to mention SJC Houston. And oftentimes, the top 16 was literally 16 Dark Arm Dragon. Houston, for yeah. instance, is yep. 15 Teledads and a Light Sworn. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> we are going to have a lot of different builds of this deck to pull from in the coming episodes. We are going to have a a lot of different variants to test out and we're gonna have a, have a lot of people who were building for a tier zero meta uh, to check out as well. One thing that people tend to forget during these metagames in which really one deck is dominant, I'm talking this one, I'm talking 2018 Spiral, is that if the number one deck is a known quantity and it comprises 80% of the field, you can bet over the course of a six round tournament, you're going to be hitting it at least five times. So if you trick yep. out your main deck well enough, you might just stand a fighting chance even against decks this powerful. And I'd like to see what people brewed up in order to do so. Similar to how I had the uh, draw for for turn one idiot sticky note uh, when I couldn't do that at the beginning of the history. Maybe I need to be have a check the graveyard idiot sticky uh, note next to that one to make sure I don't do that in the future. In but your we'll defense, we'll in your defense, it didn't really matter until this week. Graveyard effects before now were super telegraphed. Things like Destiny Hero Malicious, uh, etc. Not a lot you could banish from the graveyard at quick speed to interact with your opponent on their turn. I think Necro Gardena is really the first one. And I have a week up on you because I got to play Light Sworn. So, no but surprise. It matters when I it tied the fucking series, Joseph. That's <laughs> when it matters. <laughs>
Oh, well, you'll bring it back. We got tons of weeks. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the History of Yu-Gi-Oh! We really hope you guys enjoyed. We have to shout out the patrons, as always, though. So, big shout to Shadow1317, Show Tag, and to Sean Arling Jr., Cameron Smith, Joshua Schley, and Gayoko, Tim 0 x 3 Ika Ironfang, Pony Starkey, and Musa, Michael Dente, Dan the Man Hoban, Part 2, Synchro Guy, Mystic Walk, Sylvia Wilds, and Unitai Show, Draconic, Dolly Wop, Dragon Lord, Jarvis Martin, Logan, Thomas, Peter, Gregory, Thomas Elson, Jordan Coons, Calvin Iron Bladesman, Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, True Nerdgasm, Colt T, Benjamin Fuller, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Gage's third leg, that's a new one. Lumpy, Nehru Celeste, David Liu, Rockley325, Lane Rogers, Silent Agent 216, Brett Havy, I Sidon, Gren Maju, and Salad, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, Garthox, DOW, John Two Bays, Yusuf Asian 05, Apathy Astro, Brody Eastwood, Dace Allen, Carlos CT, Flannel Daddy, and Speedroid or Riot. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.